So along with the rest of the world, YouTube is currently going to absolute shit, plain and simple. Their staff are simps, their bots and systems are all sorts of broken, and they're doing kind of nothing about it. I'm going to bring up several examples of a few different situations throughout the video, along with my own opinions and experiences with the platform. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Hungers! <laughs> Due to recent worldwide circumstances, YouTube has elected to mainly rely on bots instead of a human workforce. This is a problem for several reasons, considering YouTube literally outright said in a tweet that videos that don't break terms of service will be removed. And that's absolutely unacceptable. YouTube's strike policy is already in shambles, and the last thing we need is more bots fucking everything up even more. Is there no way YouTube employees can access whatever sites and programs they need from home? Honestly, I don't know how YouTube conducts its manual reviews, but I highly, highly doubt that it's not something that's doable from home. I mean, come on. Even if it is some kind of super heavy program, you're telling me that these people who work at YouTube, who are likely programmers and computer engineers, they don't have the kind of equipment to handle that? Again, I am by no means a computer person, but the situation seems a little sketchy, at least from my end. Another thing, let's say that, there's, that there is no way for YouTube employees to access the review system from home. Could the bots at least be worked on a little bit? It's no secret that the bots on YouTube are dog shit at their job, and even though they are competent, they're not competent enough, and that needs to be, you know, fixed, or at least given some shred of attention. The fact that these bots are the main workforce or something as delicate as a community guideline strike is absurd, and it's likely going to give a lot of people an opportunity to make more and more false claims that won't be resolved for the foreseeable future. We all know there's no shortage of people like that in every single community. Hell, this could even cause new people to begin abusing the report system, seeing as I don't doubt that there are people that want to abuse the system but don't due to fear of being caught. Now that that chance of being caught, or at least the chance of the person you're attacking coming back from a strike is significantly lower, it could theoretically embolden people to go down that path, which is obviously not something we want. I did receive an email, um, this isn't in the script, so apologies if I stutter a little bit, but I recently got an email from YouTube saying something about like a self-review system. I can't exactly, I don't have the email in front of me, so I can't tell you exactly what it is, but that could pertain some relevance, and I don't understand it very well, so just take everything I said with that in mind doesn't mean, you know, everything I said here is automatically invalid. I do feel like this still holds weight, but just, you know, uh, just th that's a little bit of information. But YouTube is already extremely shady when it comes to strikes, and having this system in place where it's mostly bots doing all the work isn't, you know, it's not a, it's not a very good idea. Everyone under the sun knows how bad YouTube is with enforcing its own rules. I myself have gotten into some drama with it only a few weeks back, and I'm still pretty frustrated with how the whole thing played out. However, I'll save my situation for later, as there's a bigger problem with abusive flagging going on. As you all know, there's a YouTuber known as Suzy Lou, who's notorious for false flagging, allegedly encouraging false flagging, and copyright striking other YouTubers who criticize her in the past. Suzy is an anime reaction YouTuber who takes entire episodes of animes and offers nothing remotely transformed. Formative. I'm obviously using the word reaction here very lightly. She purposely lowers the opacity of her videos so that content's ID bots can't pick it up, which is, you know, not good. A brief rundown of the drama surrounding her begins some time back where she struck a YouTuber known as Mark After Dark for using a short clip of her in the intro of his video, which fell completely under fair use. Several commentators made responses to this, one of which was flagged for bullying and harassment. Susie then admitted on Twitter later that she did indeed flag the video because she quote, didn't like it. And that's obviously not how flagging works. There is an abundance of evidence that proves she is prone to abusing the report system, from tweets Susie made herself to live footage of her showing her flag history. While it's recently come out that Susie's claims about her contact at YouTube bending over backwards for her are questionable at best, it still doesn't explain the fact that YouTube is seemingly willing to throw out their own rules for her, as seen in the series of tweets regarding a falsely flagged video by commentator John Swan. The response reads as follows. We apply our policies consistently, regardless of who flags content. Your video was flagged by many users before being removed. Absolute lie right off the bat. YouTube does not apply their policies consistently, because if that were true, every single video containing an insult towards someone would, you know, be removed, or John Swan's original video should have stayed up. If scripted satire no longer is an exception, then every single late night talk show where celebrities poke fun at politicians' looks should be banned. John's video contained nothing but criticism with a few scripted jokes, which was what his video was taken down for, the jokes. YouTube has creators more than 10 times Suzy's size, with issues of all shapes and sizes, but you don't see them getting A-list treatment. You don't see them getting videos criticizing them removed. 
I mean, maybe H3A tree, but that's a bit of a different story. But I still, I wonder why Susie Liu, who's, you know, pretty irrelevant in terms of the grand scheme of things, is getting this kind of treatment. For example, Megan, and I'm very sorry about this last name, I'm probably gonna butcher it, um, Rinks, who had her 2 million sub platform hacked. YouTube's response was absolutely awful, to say the very least. They were, uh, they were of next to no help, but apparently, YouTube's willing to disregard a good chunk of their TOS for some nobody who complained to them? Something really doesn't add up here. The rest of YouTube response here was kind of flat, except for this line here saying, We also looked into your concerns regarding copyright abuse and did not find any evidence of that. Now this could mean two things, either referring to Susie's original claim on Rock After Dark or Susie's blatant copyright violation on her entire channel. Either way, the team who quote unquote looked into this must have had a fucking blindfold on because there's literally evidence for both claims being extremely valid. A lawyer, an actual lawyer, looked into Mark's video and found it to be fair use. Fun fact, an interview with the lawyer stating that it was fair use got reported for bullying and harassment, which is ludicrous seeing as nothing of that sort came remotely close to appearing in that video. And I'm pretty sure anyone who's able to turn on a computer can also see that posting full-length anime episodes with little to no reaction at all while purposely circumventing bots is absolutely not fair use. YouTube has some kind of favoritism towards creators that most of the time don't even make sense, but I have a bit of a hunch Susie's giving her partner manager a little more than most people if you catch my drift. <laughs> Ah uh, yes, my favorite subject to talk about, abuse of the copyright system. I'll be using my own situation for this example. As you all know, a few weeks ago I was falsely struck down by Jellybug Studios. The situation has been resolved, albeit with methods I absolutely don't agree with nor condone, but it's been resolved nonetheless. After talking with someone who has dealt with Jello, I doubt that she would have released a copyright strike on her own, much less actually given a genuine apology that was her own decision to make. However, that's a topic for a different video. The type of system YouTube has in place clearly isn't working as, you know, this company obviously doesn't give a rat's ass about copyrights and will only act if their own company lands in hot water. YouTube doesn't care if people falsely abuse the copyright system as I have never heard of anyone involved in a mainstream copyright case actually getting served a termination for abusing the system. It warns you when you try and file a copyright claim that you could get in legal trouble or have your channel suspended. But at this point, what the hell is that warning even for? No justice has ever been served for a false copyright strike that I've seen. No channel I've seen has ever been terminated for that. Susie Liu is still up, Onision is still up, Chantel Maria is still up, and I have zero doubt in my mind that had Jellybug not had to run into the wrong people, her channel would still be up to. YouTube doesn't care about you unless you're giving their workers pussy or Miss Wajiki, Wajiki I, I don't know, man, but it's the CEO money, and that's pretty much just a fact at this point. It bothers me to no end that nothing on YouTube is going to be changed unless the company itself is in danger, because that's how we saw most of these changes get, you know, brought around. Kappa, we warned them about the weird Elsa Gate videos, and they didn't listen, and... There we are. Um, we have Kappa now. And while it's not as bad as everyone thought it would be, it's still kind of a yikes, considering that YouTube could have done something about it earlier, but just didn't. And there are still so many channels that violate this that are, you know, nothing's being done about them, and it's absurd. And I'm obviously getting a little bit, you know, frustrated, but let's move on. <laughs> There have been some extremely weird ads displayed on YouTube. Now, this isn't that much of a concern, but I do find it a bit hypocritical on their end for allowing this kind of stuff to run on their platform. Some of the ads I've seen have should have just been thinly veiled ass pics disguised as clothing advertisements, and not to mention the wish ads that are super weird and clickbaity. One ad in specific that was straight up just a fucking rubber titty, nipple showing and null. Not to mention the other ads I see where people are posting them all over Twitter. Ads that show YouTubers like Mr. Beast in their thumbnails with likely no permission from the actual YouTuber to do so. It's honestly confusing how YouTube lets these kinds of ads run on their site, considering the amount of content that's uploaded daily that they just seem to brush off and ignore. Cough cough, gotcha 13 plus content, cough cough. These things must go through some kind of approval process, right? It's just beyond me how any of these ads actually make it through because like, do YouTuber employees just not use their own site? What? How could something that's literally, and I am not exaggerating, a bare ass tit slip through their filters, yet content like Sexy Sisters 13 Plus can stay up without issue and likely be monetized? There is just a, actually a channel that has videos with literal porn in the thumbnails, with videos that are aimed towards kids. 
and it's it's up nothing's being done about it the lack of self-awareness on this platform is just stunning and I don't know what else to say that YouTube doesn't say for itself with this kind of, you know, these kind of practices. Whoa! Yankee with no brim! In short, YouTube needs major changes. The way they run their reviews, the way they handle copyright, the way they deal with the creator's issues, everything needs a change, or at least a small revamp. My suggestions are to hire more human workers or to get your human workers on board at this time so that bots aren't taking down videos unfairly. A revamp of the copyright system is an order where users get more stricter and more frequent punishment for breaking copyright rules, and videos that get flagged for community guideline strike shouldn't completely be taken down until it's mainly reviewed and confirmed as breaking TOS. In the meantime, flagged videos could simply be demonetized or taken off recommendations and labeled with a warning, not outright deleted like it is today as by vetted companies like Apple, Nike, Coca-Cola, etc. should have a pretty easy time getting an ad place, but lesser known companies should have all their ads planned out and approved beforehand with no changes possible once the final approval has been submitted. Those are just my suggestions, and even though I may not be running YouTube, I can still try and, you know, get my opinion out there. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.